Now let's see how to expose inputs from a nested artboard to a parent artboard. In this file, we've got two different artboards. We've got the parent artboard and the child artboard. If we select the main artboard, you'll notice that we don't have any inputs, listeners, and we only have a single timeline. If we go to the child artboard, you'll see that we have a Boolean and a state machine that's already configured so that when we play the state machine, we've got this little toggle that can go from off to on and back. Now we can control this interaction by either clicking on the child artboard or using the Boolean down here in the inputs panel. Now that we know how the child's set up, let's go ahead and nest this artboard into the parent artboard. So what we need to do is select the parent artboard go to the artboard tools and use the nested artboards option. Or we can use the shortcut, which is in. Now, when we click on the stage, you'll see that this little group appears. And in the inspector, we have this drop down that uh, allows us to select a different artboard. Now that we've got the artboard selected, we can move this around anywhere on our parent artboard that we want. Now, if we play the state machine, you'll see that the interaction that we created before is working here on the parent artboard. But if we wanted to control it via the input directly in the inputs panel, we can't actually see that input. So if we want to be able to see that, we need to go back to the child artboard, select our input, and you'll notice that in the inspector, we have this exposed to parent artboard option. If we click that, this input will now be exposed to the parent artboard and we'll be able to see it. Now, if we go back to the parent artboard, You'll see that in the inputs panel, we now have the child artboard. And if we expand the child artboard, we'll see any of those inputs that we've exposed. If we play the state machine, you'll see that we can control the nested state machine with this exposed input. Now let's go back to the child artboard and create a new input. In this case, we're going to create a number and we're also going to add child to the start of it. Now, the main reason that we're doing this is that um, naming our inputs is going to be really, really important when we start working with listeners later on. You'll see that if we go back to the parent artboard, the number isn't exposed yet. So we need to go back and actually expose that input. So remember, you need to select the number input and then go and hit the expose to parent artboard checkmark. Once again, we can go back to the parent artboard and ensure that our input is exposed, which it is. Now, if we create a new input here on the parent artboard, we'll make a distinction between nested inputs and our parent artboard inputs. We can do that with a name, but you can also see that the ones from the parent artboard don't have an icon and the ones from the child artboard have that little nested artboard icon. Now, what does it look like if we have multiple instances of nested artboards on a parent artboard? Well, we can duplicate this by hitting Command D or Control D, and we can move it here, and uh, we'll duplicate this a couple times. And you'll notice that down in the Inputs panel, we now have multiple instances of our uh, child artboard, each with their own exposed inputs. Now, keep in mind, these are all instances of the same artboard. So if we go back to the child artboard and let's say remove the number input, and then we go back to the parent artboard, you'll see that each one of those artboards has been updated. Now, this is a great way to make changes to multiple artboards at the same time, while also having multiple artboards that can have their own interaction like we have set up here. Now, again, we've created these with both listeners, and we can also control this input from our inputs panel to create those interactions on the main artboard. As you can see, it's really easy to add and subtract inputs from a child artboard to a parent artboard. Now to end, let's go over some good practice. It's always important to name our layers and our elements, and we wanna make sure that we're naming our inputs. One of the most important things to do though is rename your nested artboards. Because we're gonna have uh, so many inputs exposed at different times, it's gonna be really, really difficult to tell the difference in which artboard we actually are changing. So we can do that in the hierarchy and make sure that we just add a number to the end of it so that now when we look in the inputs panel or when we start working with listeners, it's a lot easier to tell which input we're using.